I love the state my Linux system is in. I love using Awesome WM. Alacrity is an amazing terminal. I do a lot of work that makes sense to do inside of that terminal with CLI tools, and I use Vim as my editor. And I know a lot of you guys sort of live in this same sort of world. Maybe you don't use the same applications. Maybe instead of Vim, you use Emacs. Or maybe instead of using Alacrity, you use something like ST. But a lot of the guys who watch this channel sort of make use of these more advanced pieces of software. And when you sort of live in this world and everyone around you seems like they do as well, it gets very easy to think that everyone on Linux sort of thinks the exact same way. Thinking that everyone is great with computers, they know how to read documentation, they have at least some skill in programming, maybe they'll even be comfortable doing stuff from the command line, let's say installing something like Arch Linux. Even if you have the documentation, there's going to be a lot of people out there who aren't really comfortable doing that. And while learning is obviously good, and I won't discourage anyone who wants to pick up those skills, I don't think you should just assume that just because someone uses Linux, that they must have all of that knowledge. I'm still fairly new to the whole Linux world in general, and one thing I've noticed is when a lot of people make arguments about Linux in general, about free software, about terminal applications even, you'll have one person making an argument from the perspective of someone who already cares about it, and then the other person doesn't really care. And if you don't take that other perspective into consideration, you're basically just going to be making an argument to someone who already cares about it, and if they don't, the argument's not going to sound very convincing. Basically what I'm saying here is it's useful to take a step back and look at how regular people are actually using their computers. And I don't just mean people who are using the more normally friendly distros, things like Linux, Mint, Pop OS, Ubuntu. I'm including things like Windows and Mac OS as well, because if you want people to stop using those operating systems, you have to understand why they're actually using them in the first place and what actually appeals to them. One of the obvious things here is with a terminal. Most people, when they see a terminal, have no idea what's going on. Maybe they'll think some malware is running their system and completely freak out. And if you say, hey, you have to go make this modification to your system with the terminal, either they'll have no idea what you're talking about, or they'll think that that's way too hard to do and try to find some other way to do it. But that doesn't really make any sense, because prior to computers being such a widespread thing, the way you would interact with a computer is through a terminal. So shouldn't terminals just be the default way everyone works? Well, computers have moved very, very far beyond that point, and that's not the way that most people interact with their system. The reason why most people don't want to use a terminal is because people want to stick with what they're comfortable with. And if you've only used something like, say, Windows throughout your entire computing life, Everything that you've done has been through some sort of GUI interface, and there's just been no reason to ever actually open up a terminal. Obviously, with the older Windows, that's a bit different, but any of the modern operating systems, you don't need to do it. And there's a reason why GUIs are just more common, because GUIs are frankly easier to learn. Yes, you can say, oh, but this application has all of these man pages and all of this amazing documentation. But if I can just click around a couple of buttons and kind of work out what stuff is doing through trial and error, that is going to be much, much easier than trying to remember a bunch of commands. It might be less efficient, but it is a much, much lower barrier to entry that allows basically anyone to easily make use of a computer. And another thing that really helps with a GUI is it makes it very easy to transfer knowledge between different applications. So if I see something like, say, a floppy disk icon in a word processor, if I go over to, say, a image editor and I see a floppy disk icon there, I can kind of infer, even if it doesn't have a label, those are both probably save buttons. Explaining things like how bloated the GUI is and how much performance it wastes isn't really relevant to why most people make use of GUIs. So if you want to explain why a terminal application might be better, you have to understand those benefits so that you can frame the benefits of the terminal application. So if GUIs are easier to learn, well, commands give you far, far more control, and they're not actually that difficult to understand. You probably don't need to know every single command something like, say, FFmpeg can do if you want to use it instead of Handbrake. You just need to know a couple of them, and remembering those is actually fairly easy. 
or let's say a CLI application is much easier to do a repeated action. You don't have to keep going back into the GUI and finding where that button is each time to go and click on it again. Instead, you can just go and rerun the command and there you go, basically. I feel like providing that knowledge is considerably more valuable. Shifting away from software directly, I want to talk about the way that people in this sphere generally talk about software they don't like. And I've noticed there is one buzzword that gets massively, massively overused, and that buzzword is evil. Now, someone's probably going to argue that, oh, evil is not a buzzword, but the way I see it getting used absolutely is, and it basically is being used as a way to sum up an entire argument without actually making any sort of argument. So we can all agree that some forms of technology are evil. Things like, say, a botnet, a malware, a hidden Bitcoin mine, a ransomware, even people who have no idea about computers will probably hear those words and think, okay, that's probably something bad. I don't know how it works, but I've heard people say they're evil, so I guess they must be. On the other hand, though, there's nothing really gained calling things you just don't like evil. Things like, say, GUIs, Electron, word processors, JavaScript, even proprietary applications. If you're going to say these things are evil, instead of doing that, explain why you don't like it. If you don't like proprietary software, explain what the problem actually is. Because if you're saying something like, proprietary software is evil, that argument is understood by someone who also agrees that proprietary software is evil. Both of you are probably supporters of the Free Software Foundation, you probably both like Richard Stallman, and there is some shared communication that is had there, even if you don't say exactly what you mean. But if that shared understanding doesn't exist, let's say you are a free software supporter, and the other person literally has no idea what free software is. If you say the word free software, they assume that you mean the software is free of charge. In that case, talking about, say, proprietary software being evil doesn't mean anything. All it does is makes you sound kind of insane. Or how about word processors are evil? If you're just some random office worker and you hear that, you're just like, okay, I use word processors every day. It does everything that I need it to do. Doesn't seem that evil to me. I don't know what you're complaining about. And you won't actually be making any sort of reasonable point to that person. The only time saying something like that or saying something like FUD or any of these buzzwords where they have a lot of encapsulated meaning actually mean anything is when the person you're talking to already agrees with you. Let's take the word processor example. Why do people use them? Word processors are simple to learn. They give you a complete environment. It makes it very easy to share documents between people, especially if you're using something like, say, Google Docs. This is why people use them, because they're easy. If you think that they shouldn't use them, explain what your alternate solution actually has in terms of what they actually care about. Sure, you can say, oh, it makes it so you don't get distracted by all of these things in the word processor, but if they don't get distracted by it, that argument's not going to really hold any weight. You could say something instead like, okay, if you want to have your document formatted in a very specific way, if you want to go and modify that in a word processor, modifying it might break the formatting. But if you do that in something like LaTeX instead, then the formatting's only gonna break if you modify the formatting tags. I know I harp on about communication all of the time on this channel, but I honestly think it is one of the most important things to actually getting people involved in not just Linux, but free software and all of this sort of stuff. Because I think this is one of the big reasons why more people don't actually know or even care about free software. Because if your arguments about free software only makes sense to people who already care about free software, why would anyone else actually get interested in it? You could just say, oh, but free software is just the better way to do stuff or the only correct way. But if they don't agree with you because your arguments just don't make any sense to them, why would they change their mind? My whole point here isn't to say you should stop using your system the way that you're using it and instead go and install something like Pop! OS or Manjaro or Ubuntu or you should stop supporting free software and instead go and use nothing but proprietary binaries. That's not what I'm saying whatsoever. But if you want more people to support the things that you support, whatever those things are going to be, you need to understand why people don't already support them. 
And then once you know that, then you can frame what you want them to know about in what they actually care about and make it so you might actually change someone's opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Maybe you completely disagree with me and you think the best way to change someone's mind is to just bash their head against the wall until they agree with you. I don't know. Maybe that's a better way. I haven't tried it before. So that'll be it for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter, D, Stephen, T, through Tony, Tushar, and all of my two little supporters. If you'd like to go on support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week usually and upload usually about five youtube shorts and this channel is available over on odyssey that's it for me and i'm out